Okay, so last week, what we have seen is Kautsa has entered the yaga, and he has met up with Raghu. They are uh, talking about why Kautsa has come to meet him, whether he has come to meet Raghu based on the instructions from Varatantu, or has he come by himself? Okay, so Kautsa will narrate the story of why he would want. a huge amount as guru dakshina so he will tell ragu that he would have completed his studies and he will ask his guru varatantu to din uh, to indicate the guru dakshina so varatantu will say no problem you have done a good job you have you have served me with interest and uh, you have learnt very well so i don't need any guru dakshina however this kautsa will keep on pestering varatantu telling that no 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 i have to give you guru dakshina you have to tell me something you have to tell me something and because of his pestering varatantu will get angry so he will ask kautsa to bring 14 crore nanya nanya kani so 14 crores of currency so you can take the currency to be gold coins so varatantu will ask kautsa to get him 14 crore gold coins as the guru dakshina the reason being kautsa would have learnt 14 vidyas from varatantu so that is what we saw in the 14th shloka vidya parisankhya implies according to the number of knowledge acquired chatasra dasha chatasra is 4 dasha is 10 so 4 plus 10 14 koti is crores with tasya with tasya implies money ahara is get so that that was what we had that is where we had stopped last week continuing with the 15th shloka anybody wants to read anyway we'll have a separate reading session so not to waste time i'll read soham saparya vidhi bajanena उपरोक्रय Okay, I'll repeat. Saha aham saparya vidhi bajane na matva bhavantam prabhu shabta shesham abhyutsahe samprati no parothum alpe taratvat shuta nishkrayasya. Saha aham is a very famous usage. It implies that I, that I, so aham. That I, saha aham, that I, bhavantam, prabhu shabda shesham matva. That I, who considers you as a king only by your title, prabhu shabda shesham, you are a king only by your title. You don't have any other thing to imply that you are a king. Why? Because. Saparya vidhi bhaja nena. I saw, I I came to this conclusion by seeing the instrument that you were using to give the argya. Saparya is seva, vidhi bhaja nena is the patra that is used to give argya. So what was Raghu using to give argya? He was using a mud pot, right? So Kautsa, having seen Raghu giving argya in a mud pot, considers Raghu. to be a king only by name he doesn't have any other quality to be as a to be called as a king that is what prabhu shabda shesham implies okay andre naam ke vaste ninu raja anta he is telling okay a kautsa is telling ragu saha aham saparya vidhi bhajanena bhavantam prabhu shabda shesham matva so because you are giving argya in a because you are giving argya in a mud pot and through see, and by seeing that instrument 
I consider you as king only by title and therefore Samprati is Adhuna. It is a synonym for Adhuna or Idani. Okay. Shruta Nishkrayasya is a synonym for Guru Dakshina. Shruta Nishkrayasya is a synonym for Guru Dakshina. Shruta Nishkrayaha is the word. Tasya is Shashti. So Shruta Nishkrayasya Alpeta Ratvat Pansami because the Guru Dakshina is not a small amount. Alpa is small. Alpetara is not small. Opposite of small. Okay. Uparodhum. To pester you. To ask you. Na abhyutsahe. I wouldn't venture to pester you because the Guru Dakshina is not a small amount. That is the Anvaya. Anvaya for this sir. Uh, sentence so the sentence what the sentence tells us is kautsa is telling ragu that by seeing the patra you are using by seeing the instrument that you are using to give agya i concluded that you are a prabhu shabda shesha you are a king only by name at this point of time samprati because Shruta Nishkrayasya Alpeta Atvat, because the Guru Dakshina is not a small amount, Uparodhum, I will not venture to ask you. I will not venture to pester you to give it. Okay. So basically, he is telling that you have given away everything. So I will not be able to get the Guru Dakshina from you. Thank you. That is what this shloka implies. Okay. Uh, so the Anvaya goes like this, the prose order. Saha aham, saha aham, saparya vidi bhajanena bhavantam prabhu shabda shesham matva shruta nishkrayasya alpeta ratvat samprati uparodhum na abhyutsahe. Okay. So any doubts with any of the words? So the vibhaktis are self-explanatory. Saparya Vidipajanena is Tritya. Matva will be an Avyayam. Bhavantam is like Tvam. Prabhu Shabda Shesham is again Tritya. Abhyutsahe. Anybody can identify Abhyutsahe? Which Lakara Purusha Vatsana? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. Vidiling, Vidiling. Ah, uh, no, it is not Vidiling. So, uh, basically, this Abhi, right? Abhi is an Upasarga. So, Abhi plus Sahate. Abhi plus Sahate becomes Abhyut Sahe. Okay, Abhi plus Ut plus Sahate. Okay, so there are two Upasargas. Abhi plus Ut plus sahate becomes abhyut sahe. Sahate, uh, this word will simply retain sahate uh, purusha linga, uh, purusha and vatsana. So it will be latlakara, atmanepadi, uttama purusha, eka vatsana. So it will be conjugated like sahate itself. So we can simply tell it as sahate, sahate, sahante, sahase, sahate, sahatve, sahe, sahavahe, sahamahe, right? So abhyut sahe is uttam purusha ekavatsana. Samprati is an avyayam. Parodhum is tumun, so it is an avyayam. Alpetaratvat, pansame bhakti. Alpetaratvat plus Shrutanishkrayasya becomes Alpetaratvat Shrutanishkrayasya. Anybody can identify the Sandhi? What is the Sandhi here? Chutva Sandhi. Yes, exactly. Chutva Sandhi. Yes, Chutva Sandhi. Sorry, yeah. Shrutanishkrayasya is Shashti. Okay. Yes, I think I covered all the words here. Any doubts? In the 15th shloka. Uh, 
Okay, we'll move on. The 16th sloka. So, in the previous sloka, Kautsa was the speaker. The 16th sloka is a conjunctive sloka. So, it is like a handover from Kautsa being the speaker to Raghu being the speaker. So, from 16th sloka onwards, Raghu will start speaking. Okay. Itham dvijena dvijaraja kanti hi avedito veda vidam parena eno nivrittendriya vrittirenam jagada bhuyo jagadeka nathah Okay. So the padacheda is itham dvijena dvijaraja kanti hi avedithah veda vidam varena ena Yeno nivrittendriya vrittihi yenam jagada jagadeka natha. Jagadeka natha is the same Right. Itham. Like this. We follow the previous rule of grouping words by their vibhaktis. So dvijena is trutiya. Dvijaraja kantihi is prathama. Avedithaha is Prathama, Veda Vidam is Shashti, Varena is Tritya, Eno Nivrittendriya Vrittihi is Prathama, Enam, He Gay. So this Enam is a little different. Uh, yeah. Anybody can identify this Enam? Which Vibhakti? Where do we find this? Ya. Vitiya. Eno nivrittendriya vritti plus yenam. Vitiya. Uh, okay. okay. Yetam yenam. Yes, yes. Ye. Jagada is lit. Bhuyaha, uh, it is an abhyam. And Dajagadekanata is Prathama. Okay. Yes, I think I covered everything. So we'll group words by their vibhaktis. Dvijena Tritya, so put it in one side. Varena is Tritya, put it to one side. Uh, any other? Okay, we cannot use Varena independently. We have to use it with Veda Vidam Varena. Veda with is a person who knows Veda. Vedam Janati. Veda Vidam is among the people who know Vedas. Veda Jnana Vatam. So basically people who know or who have knowledge of Vedas. Among them Varena. So we have to use these two words together. Veda Vidam Varena. Dvijena, they are Tritya Vibhakti words. Pratham Vibhakti words are Aveditaha, Eno Nivritti Indiya Vrittihi, Dagadeka Natha. So, how is, the, uh, how is the anvaya of this? Itham, he gave, like this, Kautsa was speaking, right? So, that is why they have used Itham, like this. Dvijena, Dvijena, Dvija is a Brahmana. So, Dvijena is Kautsena. Dvija Raja Kantihi is a synonym for Chandra. Okay. Dvija Raja is Chandra. Dvija Raja Kantihi here implies Kautsa. Oh, it doesn't imply Kautsa. How can it imply Kautsa? Dvija Raja Kantihi is a Prathama Vibhakti word. Since Kautsa is being implied as Tritya Vibhakti, that is how we can conclude that Vijayanaga Kanti is definitely not Kautsa. So, Dvijena, Veda Vidam, Varena, Itham, Aveditaha. Dvijena by Kautsa, Veda Vidam, Varena by the best or one who is considered as the top, topmost among people who have understood the Veda. Raghu was told the following. That is what the sentence means. 
Kautsa told the following to Raghu. So Kautsa Tvitena Veda Vidam Varena Itham Avedita. He said the following. To whom did he say the following? Dvijaraja Kantihi. Dvijaraja Kantihi. Dvijaraja, Dvijaraja, as I said, implies Chandra. Dvijaraja Kantihi implies a person who glows, who illuminates, who shines like the moon. So here it is. It is an adjective for Raghu. Another adjective for Raghu is Eno Nibrattendriya Vrattihi. This is a very interesting word. Ena means Papa. Sin. Okay. Ena. Ena Shabdaha Sakaranta Napum Sakalinga Ena Shabdaha. It is, it is conjugated as Enaha Ena Si Ena Si. So this is, this word implies sin. Nivritta is without a sin. What is without a sin? Indriya. Indriya vrittihi. The behavior of his organs was without any sin. Eno nivritta indriya vrittihi implies that he as a person has not committed any sin. This is an adjective for Raghu. Jagadekanathaha say it is a Raja. So it implies a king. Bhuyaha Jagada. Jagada also means speak. Okay, so now we have somewhat understood the meaning of each words. How do we put this shloka together? It is like this. Kautsa, having heard what Kautsa spoke, Raghu started to speak the following. That is how the flow of this shloka is. Having heard what Kautsa had to say, Raghu said the following. So, Vijena, Vedavidam Varena, Vijarada Kantihi, Eno Nivrittendriya, uh, Eno Nivrittendriya Vrittihi, Jagadeka Nataha, Aveditaha. He was told by Kautsa all these things. Bhuyaha again. Jagada, he started to speak. Okay. So, Dvijena, Dvijara, Dvijena, Veda Vidam Varena, Dvijaraja Kantihi Avetidaha. If we want, we can stop there. Dvijena, Veda Vidam Varena, Dvijaraja Kantihi Avetidaha. By the Brahmin, by the best among the people who know Vedas or who have learnt or understood Vedas, Dvijaraja Kantihi, Raghu, Avedithaha was told the following, was told these things. Itham implies he was told these things. Avedithaha is a ta pratyaya. It implies past tense. He was told. A plus veti becomes Avedithaha. Okay, if you put ta pratyaya. So, by Kautsa, who was considered as best among the people who have read the Vedas, Dvijaraja Kantihi Raghuhu was told the following, was told the above. Then what happened? Bhūyaha, again, Jagadeka Nathaha Raghuhu, Eno Nivrittendriya Raghuhu, Eno Nivrittendriya Vrittihi Raghuhu, Enam Jagada, he started to speak the following. So, Kautha has finished and Raghu has started to speak. So it's just a conjunctive shloka. But it has Kalidasa's twist in it. So that is why it is not as simple as Kautsa said the following to Raghu and Raghu started to speak. Okay. Yes. Any doubts here? And now what are the adjectives for Raghu in this shloka? Ah, yes. Adjectives for Raghu is Dvijaraja Kantihi, Eno Nivrittendriya Vrittihi, Jagadeka Nathaha. How should you identify it? All of these words are in Tatama Vibhakti. And all of these imply by their nature itself to India uh, for Raghu. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dvijena, Veda Vidam Varena are for Kautsa. So, Dvijena Vedavidam Varena Kautsena Raghuhu, Dvijaraja Kantihi Raghuhu Aveditaha, 
एंड वॉट वॉज इ टोल्ड इत्थम आवेदित भूय जगदेकनाथ ऐनो निवृत्ति वृत्ति एनम जगाद जगाद इज लिटकार इट इंप्लाइज स्पोक इट इज लाइक उवाच सो उवाच इज अम फॉर जगाद so yeah whenever you write bhavartha you can use your own words you should use your own words whatever you have understood from the shloka right so one way of doing it is to write the vigraha vakya in the bhavartha so dujarada kanti you can simply write as chandrasya kanti asya saha so eno nivritti indriya vritti you can say papat nivrittah and jagadekanatah you can say raja and veda vidambarena you can say veda gnanavatam shreshthah right so the best method or the best technique to write bhavartha is to simply change the given word with their synonyms okay right if there are no doubts we will move on to the next shloka गुर्वर्थमर्थीषु तपार दृष्ट्वा रघो सकाशा अनवाप्य काम गदान्यातरमीतम मे मूत्परीवादनवावतार सो गुर्वर्थमर्थी श्रुतपार दृष्ट्वा रघो सकाशा अनवाप्य काम गदान्यातरम अयम मे मूत परीवाद नवावतार्थमर्थी शतपार दृश्वा और ऑल प्रथम विभक्ति रघो षष्टी सकाशा इज नव्यय अनवाप्य इज नव्यय काम स्मृतिय गा वदान्यातरम फल अयम सो सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी मम मे मेय भूत इज लुंग परीवाद नवतार इज राम राइट गुर्वर्थम अर्थी सो देर इज एन अर्थी अर्थी इज अ सीकर For what is he a seeker? He is a seeker for guru artham, guru ho artham, money for the guru. He was a seeker for guru dakshina, right? Kautsa was a seeker for guru dakshina. Yes. Before I start, as we saw in the previous shloka, Raghu has Raghu has started to speak. So these are the words of Raghu. Guru artham arthi is calling Kautsa has as a seeker. Of Guru Dakshina, Shruta Paradrishwa. Shruta implies Vidya, right? Paradrishwa, Paradrishwa means Vidya yah param drishtavan yah sa. So a person who has read, who has completed his education, is called as a Shruta Paradrishwa. Or rather, a person who has a good perspective of knowledge is called as a Shruta Paradrishwa. Again, it is referring to Kautsa. Rago ho sakashat. So we have we know sakashat is with or from. Rago ho sakashat from rago. Kamam anavapya. Kamam is desire. Anavapya is not addressed or incomplete or unattended. so kautsa's desire of procuring guru dakshina from raghu was not completed iti anta we will come to the next line iti parivada navavatar parivada navavatar is again a very very interesting word okay parivada navavatar means parivada means blame a very important word for blame okay so 
Navavataraha is manifestation of that flame to his descendants. So that blame will be passed down, passed down through my descendants. Anta Raghu is telling to Kautsa. Raghu is telling to Kautsa that if I am incapable of addressing your desire of procuring the Guru Dakshina for your Guru, then that blame or that black spot will be passed down throughout my generation. Parivadanavatara. And only not that not that only he, he was unable to fulfill his desires. He also made Kautsa to go somewhere else. Vadanyantaram Gataha. Vadanyantaram Gataha. Vadanyantaram is somebody else. To somebody else. Okay. To somebody else, Gataha. Went. Iti ayam. Ayam. Parivada Navatara, this blame may nanage ma bhut. I don't want this blame that Raghu, being a king, was not able to fulfill the desires of a seeker. A seeker who was asking for Guru Dakshina, a seeker who was a learned man. And me, a, a Raghu, as a king, made that seeker to go to somebody else in order to get his desires fulfilled. This type of blame, I don't want to be passed down throughout my progeny or throughout my clan. So uh, we'll first see the Anvaya in the proper order, the prose order. Shruta Paradrishwa Gurvartha Marthi Raboho Sakashat Kamam anava, Anavapya Vadanyantanam Gataha Iti Ayam Parivada Navavataraha Me Mabhut. If you are if you are able to visualize this as a conversation, as a sentence, the prose order becomes very simple. So Gurvartha Marti Shruta Paradrishva Kautsa, who was a seeker for Guru Dakshina, Ragoha Sakashat Kamam Anavapya, who could not get his desires fulfilled from Raghu. Vadanyantaram Gataha went to somebody else. Iti, like this. Parivada Navavataraha, blame. Me Mabhut, I don't want. This center, this sloka is told by Raghu. So he says, I don't want the blame that Raghu was incapable of addressing the issues or the desires of a knowledgeable person and sent him to somebody else. In a one-line sentence, this is the Anvaya of the Shloka. So if you are able to visualize this as a conversation between Raghu and Kautsa, as I said, it would make a lot of sense and uh, you will start to enjoy this. Right. Okay. Any doubts? This is one of the important Shlokas. And I would suggest you to uh, by heart the Shloka. If possible, have all the shlokas in this lesson Kantapatha or else this shloka at least you should be able to understand or remember and reproduce. Satvam prashaste mahite madiye pasam saturtok nirivagnyagare vitran yahan yarhasi sothumarkhan yavadyate sathagitum tvadartham saha Tvam, Sahatvam, we saw Soham in the last uh, page. This is Sahatvam, that you. Prashaste Mahite Madhiye Vasan Chaturtaha Agnihi Iva Agnyagare Dvitrani Ahani Arhasi Sodhum Arhan Yavat Yate Sadhagitum Tvat Artham Okay, so Prashaste Mahite Madhi all are Saptami, Agnyagare Saptami, Vasan, Spathan type. So it will be Shatra. Chaturtaha Agnihi is Harihi, Iva is Napeya, Dvitrani, Ahani, all are Napumsakalinga, Bhuvatsanam, Arhasi, Madhyama Purusha, Ekavatsanam. 
ಸೋಢುಂ ತುಮುಲ್ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಬೋಧನ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಯಾವತ್ ಎಸ್ ಪಂಚಮಿ ಯತೆ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ರಯತೆ ಮನ್ಯತೆ ಸಾಧಯಿತು ತುಮುನ್ ತ್ವತ್ ಅರ್ಥ ನಿನ್ನ ಕಾರ್ಯ ರೈಟ್ ತವ ತ್ವತ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ತವ ತವ ಕಾರ್ಯ ತ್ವದರ್ಥ ಸೊ ಸಹ ತ್ವ ದಟ್ ಯು ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಯು ಯು ಆರ್ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ದಿ ಆಫ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ದಿ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ಇಸ್ ವರ್ದಿ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ಸಹ ತ್ವ ಅರ್ಹನ್ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತೆ ಮಹಿತೆ ಮದಿಯೇ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತೆ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತವಾಗಿರುವಂಥದ್ದು ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಿ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಿಫಿಶೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತೆ ಮಹಿತೆ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಿಫಿಶೆಂಟ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಾನಮಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ರೆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಅಗ್ನೆಗಾರ ಆಸ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಯಸ್ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಿಫಿಶೆಂಟ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ರೆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಅಗ್ನಿಗಾರ ಆಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ರಘು see what has happened ragu has told kautsa that see i am a king and uh, i don't want the blame that i was not able to fulfill a seeker's desire so what you have to do as you have seen i have given everything away in the yaga at pre- at the present uh, time i don't have any wealth or any money with me so what ragu is trying to convince kautsa is you please wait for some time if you wait for some time i will be able to procure wealth by some means i will try to do something and i will try to arrange for your gurudakshana that is what ragu is telling kautsa so for that he is in this shloka he is telling that you please wait in my agnyagara okay agnyagara is agni shala where they keep the fire in the house right so uh, i was told that uh, uh, in those days they used to have a fire constantly burning in uh, in one room of the house and uh, agara is called as the house and agnyagara is the place where they keep the fire burning agni shala okay and it is said that there are three agnis and the agnis go by the name garhyapatyam ahavaniyam and dakshin agni okay all these things are extra so what Ag- ragu is telling kautsa is you please wait in my agni shala like the fourth agni okay so there are three types of agni as i mentioned you be the fourth agni and wait there and by that time i will try to get your money okay so let us see what kalidasa has said here sahatvam that you arhan sahatvam prashaste mahite madiye agnyagare in that shala in that agni shala chaturtaha agnihi iva like the fourth fire iva vasan you please wait you please live there and how should you live and for what time should you wait dvitrani 3 or 4 days dvitrani ahami 3 or 4 days sodhum you please bear with me ar sodhum arhasi you will be capable of waiting for 3 or 4 days okay so kautsa you please wait for 3 or 4 days in my magnificent agnyagara uh, the place where we keep fire like the fourth agni right and by that time yavat by that time tvad artham your money sadhayitum your money or your desire sadhayitum to accomplish that yate i will try okay so madiye can anybody identify this word madiye madiyam okay i'll give you a clue madiyam you would have heard of madiyam 
Mama idam. Yes, exactly. Mama idam is madhyam. Tasmin is uh, saptami, so it is madhye. So that agnyagara belongs to Raghu, right? So he's calling it as my. So sahatvam that you can live in my madhye, mahite magnificent, prashaste, which is um. Uh, it is very important or very glorious. Agnyagare, the place where I keep my fire. Chaturtaha Agnihiva, like the fourth fire. Vasan, you leave there, you live there. For Vitrani Ahani, three or four days. Sodhum, bear, arhasi. You are capable of bearing this. Yavat, by that time. Twat Artham, your cause your desire sadhakitum to accomplish that yate i will try so kautsa tvam chatutah agnihi va agnyagare pratikshyasva tava karyam sadhakitum aham Prayatnam karomi iti raguhu kautsam avadat. That is the simple bhavartha of this shloka. You can simply write it in your own words. I have skipped prashastam haite. You can simply write, uh, you can just write any other word which gives the same meaning. You can write shlakhe, you can write to shishte, you can write pratishthe. Madhye can be mama idam. Or you can simply write mama. That is also fine. Okay, yes, I think uh, any doubts in this? We should move forward. Yeah, any doubts in this? If not, yes, we'll move. Tatheti tasya vitatam pratitaha pratyakrahi tsangaram agrajanma Gamata saram ragurapya vekshya Nishkrashtam artham Chakame kubherat. Okay. So we are at the point of the story where Ragu has done the Vishwajit Yaga. He has given away everything. Kautsa comes asking for Gurudakshina. But he feels disappointed seeing that Raghu has given away everything and he is giving Arjya in a mud pot. Having seen that, Kautsa decides to go ask someone else, but Raghu stops him. He says, I don't want the blame of not helping a seeker, and he requests him to stay in a Agyagara. It is like a guest house for two or three days, by which time he will try to procure the wealth. So Kautsa should agree, right? He should agree. So that is the commitment that Kautsa has because Raghu is trying so hard. So Raghu agrees. I mean, Kautsa agrees. So Kautsa says, okay, pa, I'll wait for some time. And uh, he will go to the Agnagara and he will leave. He leave the scene. So Raghu, he thinks, I have already done the Vishwachityaga. Implies that I have already got whatever wealth is possible from the earth. Everything I have already procured. Then from where should I get the wealth? I have procured and I have given away. That is another question. But where should I get this wealth from? That is what Raghu thinks in this shloka. Tathe iti. Tatha iti. Okay. Tasya. Raghu. Tasya here implies Raghu's. Avithitam. Avithatam. Avithatam is a synonym for Satyam. Okay, satyam, truth, satyam, rutam, they are all synonyms. Pratitaha, pratitaha is pritaha, so pleased, he was pleased, Kautsa was pleased. Pratyagrahit, he accepted, what did he accept? Sangaram, 
Sangaram is a synonym for Matu. What do we say in uh, Sanskritam is Vacha. Vakyam. Tasya Vakyam. Agrajanma. Agrajanma is an adjective for Kautsa. So Agrajanma. Pratitaha Agrajanma. Tasya Ragoho. Avitatam Sangaram. Tatha Iti Pratyagrahit. Okay. I will repeat this. Agrajanma Kautsaha. Pratitaha is pleased. Okay. Santushtaha. Santushtaha Kautsaha. Ragoho. Avitatam Satyam Sangaram Vakyam. Tatha iti. Tatha stu iti. Pratyagrahit. Pratyagrahit is Svikrata one. Then what did he do? Then what did Ragu do? Raguhu. Gam atasaram avekshya. Kuberat artham nishkrashtum chakame. Chakame. Anybody can identify it? Okay, Chakame is lit prathama eka. Nishkrashtum is procure. Procure. Tumun. To procure. Atta is Atta Saram, Gam Atta Saram. Okay, I have already told Gam means Earth, right? Bhumi. Gauhu is Bhumi. the word for Bhumi. So Gam is Bhumim, right? So Gauhu means Earth, Gam means Tudya Vibhakti of Bhumi. Bhumi Annu Atta Saram. It has already given up everything. It has already given away everything or he has already procured everything from the earth. Aveksha. He having understood that. What did Raghu do? Kuberat artham from Kubera. Artham nishkrashtum. To procure wealth. Chakame. He started. Chakame. He, it implies that he, mm, uh, he, he took action. He took action or he decided. That is what Chakame implies. Okay. So the Anvaya goes like this. Agrazanma pratitaha tasya avithatam sangaram tatha iti pratyakrahit rabuhu gamatasaram avekshya kuberat artham nishkrashtum chakame. Right. Any doubts? Pratav prayana abhimukaya tasmai. Savisma ya kosha grehe niyuktaha hiran mayim kosha grehasya madhye vrishtim shasham suhu patitam nabhastaha. Okay, so we saw in the previous shloka that Raghu had decided to get wealth from Kupera. And then what happened? Prataha in the morning, in the next morning it implies, in the next morning. Prayana Abhi Mukhaya. Prayana Abhi Mukhaya, he was ready to undertake that journey. The journey to Kubera's place. Correct. So he was ready to go to Kubera's place. Tasmai. Who was ready? Raghu was ready. Savismayaha. Perplexed. Surprised. Koshagrihe Nyuktaha. People who had been appointed to look after the treasury. Koshagraha is the treasury. Hiranmayim vrishtim. Hiranmayi, gold, vrishti, rain. Koshagrahasya madhye, in the middle of the treasury. Treasure chamber. Nabastaha patitam, which fell from the sky. Shasham Suhu reported. Okay. 
So if we put this every whatever we have, whatever I set in good prose order, prataha prayana bhi mukaya tasmai savismaya ha kosha grihe niyukta ha kosha grihasya madhye nabhasta ha nabhasta ha patitam hiran magim vrishtim shasham suhu. Okay. So in the morning, the people, okay, in the morning, the people who had been appointed to look after the treasury reported to Raghu that in the center of the Koshagraha, there was a rain of gold coins from the cloud. Nabastaha is from the sky, okay. Nabastaha patitam, from the sky, what did, uh, what fell from the sky? Hiran Mayim Rishtim, golden rain fell from the sky. Where did it fall? Koshagrahasya Mudhye. Who saw it? Koshagrahe Niyuktaha. What did they do? They reported it to Rag. So, the questions can be like this. K. Shasham Suhu, Koshagrahe Niyuktaha, Shasham Suhu. Kim Shasham Suhu, Hiran Mayim Rishtim Shasham Suhu, Kasmat Patitam Hiran Mayim Rishtihi, Nabastaha Patitam Hiran Mayim Rishtihi, Putra Patitaha Rishtihi, Kosha Krihasya Madhye. Okay. So, the prose order, I'll repeat again. Prataha Prayana Vimukaya Tasmai, Savismayaha Kosha Krihani Yuktaha, Kosha Grihasya Madhye, Nabastaha Patitam, Hiran Mayim Rishtim, Shasham Suhu. So, what had happened? Just, he was about to leave for his journey, but the people who had been appointed there came and told that Kubera, okay, this had to be done by Kubera, right? So, Kubera had given them a golden rain and it was falling in their treasury itself. So, say, just imagine this. Raghu thought, okay, I will, attack, I will ask Kubera or I will get uh, wealth from Kubera. By his mere thought itself, Kubera gave golden rain. Okay. So, okay, in between there are many shlokas. They are omitted here. So, uh, we get to know that Raghu will prepare himself with all the necessary weapons to go to Kubera. He will sleep in the chariot itself. All those things are omitted. We have only the selected shlokas in our lesson. Okay, So in between many things has happened. So here we have to appreciate the greatness of Prabhu, right? He just thought of attacking uh, Kubera and Kubera already had given him the required money and probably more than what is required, right? Tambhupatir Bhasura Hema Rashim Labdham Kuberat Abhyasimanat Didesha Kautsaya Samastameva Padam Sumero Riva Vadra Binam Tambhupati Bhasura Hema Rashim Labdham Kuberat Abhyasimanat Didesha Kautsaya Samastameva Padam Sumero Riva Vadra Binam As soon as you see Iva, you have to understand that there is an Upama here. So Upama Kalidasasya, he has explicitly used Upama everywhere. So for what has he used the simile here? Bhupatihi. Bhupatihi is king. It is like Jagannatha. Bhasura Hema Rashim. Bhasura is Pumba. Plenty. Phasura Hema Rasham. Hema is gold. Rasham is heap. Heap of gold. Labdham. He got. Who got? Raghu got. From whom did he get? Kubera. Who was that Kubera? Abhyasya Manat. The person who was going to be attacked. A person who was who is going to be attacked is called as a abhyasya manha. 
अभियाक्यमाना इट इज एन इंटरेस्टिंग वर्ड अभियाक्यमान इज अ पर्सन हु इज गोइंग टू बी अटैक्ट फ्रॉम दैट पर्सन फ्रॉम दैट कुबेरा भूपति रघु वॉट भासुर हेम राशि He he got a heap of gold. What did Raghu do then? He कथमस्तिभासुरहेमराशिमरा कथमस्ती quarter of sumeru mountain that is cut by indra's vajra so you have to imagine a mountain quarter part of it probably the top quarter part of it is cut by vajra yudha like that the golden heap is looking so that golden heap is like the quarter part of sumeru mountain so huge it is so you have to imagine that the heap of gold coins were like a mountain and everything whatever he got from kubera ragu gave it to kautsa that's it so bhupati hi kubera abhyasya manat from kubera who was going to be attacked labdham whatever bhasura hemarashim he got tam samastam everything whatever he got from kubera which was like sumeroho vajrabinnam padam kautsaya for kautsa tidesha he gave it so so such a huge amount of gold coins he had got but kautsa had asked only for 14 crores right okay we'll see what happens to that in the next shloka so what uh, this shloka tells us is ragu got a huge amount of gold coins from kubera which looked like the quarter part of sumeru mountain and he gave everything to kautsa this is a simple shloka any doubts here okay the last shloka for today जनस्य साकेत निवासी नस्तव द्वावप्य भूताम अभिनंद्य सत्वौ गुरु प्रदेयादिक निस्पृहोर्ति नुपूर्ति कामादिक प्रदश्च एज आई सेड कौच हैड ओनली आस्क फॉर 14 क्रोर्स बट दिस रघु हैड गिवन एवरीथिंग टू व्हाटएवर ही गॉट फ्रॉम कुबेरा टू कौच सो व्हाट इज रघु कॉल्ड एज अर्ति कामात अधिक प्रदह arthi is a seeker kama is his desires adhika pradaha he is a person who gives more than what he is asked who is that nupaha the king is a person who gives more than what the seeker expects right but what is this kautsa doing guru pradeyadika nispraha arthi nispraha is uninterested or not interested or not liking what does he not like or what does he not desire guru pradeya adhika he is not desirous of wealth that is more than what he is expected to give to his guru okay only 14 crores he wants not less not more that is why he is called as a nispraha arthi a person who is not greedy nispraha not greedy is not greedy for what guru pradeya adhika is not like okay okay anyway the king is giving me i will have some cash i will put it into bank give whatever is whatever my guru is expecting to my guru and keep the rest for myself no he is a nispraha arthi 
person who is not expecting more than what he is asking and having seen these two people what did the people living in that country do janasya saketa nivasinah saketa nivasinah shasti again bahu vachanam right okay saketa nivasinah is ek vachanam itself but it is shasti dvau api which sandhi there dvau plus api dvav api vantadesha vantadesha it is yes they both who both the arthi as well as the nupa abhinandya satvau abhinandya satvau satva is a character abhinandya is person or people who are having character which has to be appreciated abhinandya satvau are these two people are having character which are to be respected which are which has to be appreciated so they these two people became people you have to understand like this kautsa and dagu became the people who have to be respected who had respectable character for the people of saketa saketa is the place so these two people a king who gave more than what he is asked a seeker who doesn't expect more than what he has asked became people of good or appreciable character for the people of saketa right so we can simply say it, uh, the prose order remains the same guru pradeya adika nispraharti nupah arti kama adika pradah nupah dvau api janasy saketa nivasinah dvau tau you can put it there so guru pradeya adika nispraharti arti kama adika pradah nupah dvau tau dvau api janasy saketa nivasinah abhinandya satvo abhutam abhutam is again lung for past tense okay any doubts any doubts uh, i think we have covered how many shlokas today 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 yeah any doubts in the eight shlokas we covered today so we will be ending with ragora udaryam in the next class so any doubts you can ask me now or you can study and have it ready by next week what i expect is for all of all of you to be able to read the shlokas without any problem be able to understand them and be capable of writing the anvaya once you are capable of writing the anvaya writing the bhavartha will be very very simple the main aim is to be comfortable with understanding the flow and writing or understanding whatever the author wants us to, wants to convey so this is a very simple but complex at the same time this is um, this is like a litmus paper for thuria <laughs> so should be very comfortable with this lesson okay yes i think you will be having grammar class from 230 so i'll not take much time if no doubts we'll wind up for today ram 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 thank you